I'm going to show you one of the most awesome tools for editing color that is in Photoshop and a lot of people don't even use it. I wanted this video to be longer but it snowed here last night and there's snow plows going by like every 15 seconds so don't worry we're going to get it all in. Hey, it's Jim from the Photo Tribe. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to talk about color and specifically one of the most underutilized color tools in Photoshop. Also one of the most powerful color tools in Photoshop. Photoshop's got a lot of color tools, but this one I really like because it gives you so much control and it's really hard to go overboard with this. This is a tool that's overlooked a lot. And the reason I think that it's overlooked is because the interface is kind of confusing. So let's take a look at it real quick. Selective color and you bring it up and you get this interface here and you're like, what the heck is this? So you've got all the names of all these colors here, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And then there's a drop down menu with all this stuff in it. And what the heck is this? And what are these two buttons down here? So we're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, I'm going to just kind of get rid of this for a second. And in order to use this successfully, there are two things you need to do. One is you need to know what colors are in your image. Now, that's a little harder than it seems because sometimes there's a certain color in a certain part of the image and you don't really know that. It's not apparent. It's not obvious. And um, that can trip you up. The other thing is that you need to understand the color model that this operates and how that relates to the RGB model that we use all the time. And I'm going to explain that. But first, let's figure out what colors are in this image. Now, obviously, there's green and obviously there's blue and orange. You know, then we've got that orange bush there. And the light's kind of smearing all over the place, which is exactly why I chose this photo, because there's color all over the place and there's color where you don't expect it to be, which you'll see in a minute. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a duplicate of this image by going into the image menu and choosing duplicate. And now I'm going to go back to the image menu on my duplicate and I'm going to, to the mode menu here and I'm going to convert this to an 8-bit image. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to use a filter here that's only available in the 8-bit mode. If you're in 16-bit, you're not going to have this filter, and it's in the stylized menu. Actually, it's in the texture menu here, and it's the stained glass filter. So this filter, as you can guess, kind of makes your image look like stained glass. And I'm just zooming out here by clicking on the little minus sign here. And what I'm going to do is change my border thickness to 1, which is as low as I can go and let this calculate. It's going to take a second. And there we go. So that's good enough for me to know what colors I have in my image. And I'm going to click OK here and let this render out. And then we're going to grab this and I'm going to hover over my original image, which is over here, and let that highlight. Then I'm going to drag this into the window and hold down the shift key so that it drops into the center and let go. And it's going to give me a warning that the bit depth is different, the color is different, and I'm going to just say OK. So if I reduce the opacity of this, you can see what's happening here. You can see the relationships between these two layers. So we can see what we've got down on the bottom here is, you know, orange, which we knew already. But there's different shades of orange, and some of this is brown, and that means there's probably red in there. And we've got some greens over here. And these greens are going to have more yellow in them than these greens. And then we've got our blue section up here along with some yellowish green over here. So this is important because it tells me what colors I have in my image and where. I'm not going to be surprised. I'm not going to find a patch of red up here later that I missed because I know it's all down here. So let's turn this layer off and let's add a selective color adjustment layer. So we see that we have four sliders here and two buttons. So the four sliders represent the colors that are in the color red. And yes, there's more than one color in the color red, isn't there? We know that 
Obviously, we've got red in here, but there's also going to be yellow in here. And those are probably going to be the two primary colors. There's probably a little magenta in here. Sometimes a color is a cooler red, which would indicate that there might be blue in it. It might be a warmer red, which means it's got more red in it. And so this gives you control over the mix of all these colors. These two buttons down here, relative and absolute, I want you to think of these as relative being kind of the safe mode. And absolute will let you push things a little further. Now, I normally operate in absolute mode. You can operate in relative mode if you like. It's a little safer. But today, we're going to be operating here. So let's talk about this color model for a second. Let's just go over here. So this is the digital color wheel, courtesy of my friend Blake Rudis. And you can see that we've got six colors represented here, red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. The colors that are directly across from each other are called complementary colors. They're opposites. And this is the relationship that you need to understand with these colors. So let's turn this off for a second and just kind of look at this. And this is what's going on here. Red and cyan are opposites. Green and magenta are opposites. Blue and yellow are opposites. And you can see if we turn this back on that this is exactly the case. Red and cyan are opposites. Green and magenta are opposites. And blue and yellow are opposites. Now, why is this important? This is important because as we go back to our image here and we open up this adjustment layer, we can see these relationships present right here. So the cyan slider represents cyan. And if we go back here, the opposite of cyan is red. So if I move the slider to the right, I'm adding cyan to my image. If I move it to the left, I'm adding red to my image. I'm actually adding red or cyan to my reds. And we can see that the reds get redder or here they cool off. If you need to reset this, you just double click on the color name and it'll reset. Yellow and blue are opposites. So if I push the slider to the right, I'm adding more yellow to my reds. If I pull the slider to the left, I'm adding more blue to my reds. Incidentally, when you're doing color correction, you want to think about doing color correction in terms of adding the opposite color, not taking the color that is giving you a color cast away. If you subtract that color, you're going to end up with an image that's distorted color-wise in other ways. What you need to do is kind of balance the scales of the color. The black slider, if I push it to the right, it adds black to the red. If I push it to the left, it adds white to the red. So this is making it darker. This is making it lighter. And so that's basically what we've got going on here. So in this case, for the reds, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my reds a little redder. And why do I want to do that? Because I've got these other colors back here, and I want some separation between these. And so if I want to warm this red up, I could add some yellow to it, which would absolutely warm it up, or I could cool it off by adding some blue to it, which would kind of push it towards magenta. But what I'm going to do is just warm it up a little bit, just like that. Now I'm going to use a separate selective color layer for each color here, just to keep them separated. So let's go to the adjustments palette and add another one. Let's call this one red. And then for this one, let's do yellow. So I'm going to click down to yellow. Now, where are my yellows at? Well, remember this. So we've got yellows here and here. Not so much over here, some, but mostly on the left side of the image. You can see that there's more yellow in these greens. And this has this, these are cooler greens. So let's turn this off and move this slider around to see what we've got. So look at that. Double click on that to reset it. And now I'm going to make my yellows more yellow, or I can cool them off. If I'm going this way, I'm adding blue. This way I'm adding yellow. So I'm going to go in here and add some yellow to my image. And I'm going to maybe add a little magenta. If I go this way, I'm adding green to my yellows. I'm not really sure I want to do that. Let's double click here. And maybe we want to just cool these off a little bit. 
or warm them up a little bit. So add some cyan, add some red, and I think we might add a little bit of red to our yellows. All right, so now our image is kind of looking like a mess. And it's because what we need to do here is set up a mask for each one of these. And this is really simple. So let's turn this off. I'm going to click on my red mask here, and I'm going to invert it. Control or Command I to invert. And then all I need to do is grab my brush and make sure that I'm painting with white because I want to reveal the adjustment here. And I'm going to type the zero key so that I can paint at 100%. And I'm just going to color in around my bush. Perfect. Now I want to do the same thing for my yellows. And let's remember where the yellows are. They're in this bottom part. So let's turn that off. Turn this on. Let's name this yellow. And invert the mask. Controller Command I. And I'm going to grab my brush. Let's make this a little smaller. And we're just going to paint in where there is yellow. Perfect. Got a little hole in my mask there, so I'll click on that and just fill that in. And I'm going to leave the blues alone because I don't want those to get any bluer, but let's do green now. So I'm going to add another selective color adjustment. Let's double click on this and we'll call it green. And I'm going to click here, drop down to my greens and see what I've got. Got a lot of greens here. So what do I want to do with this? Well, I want to create some separation here. So maybe I want to cool this off. So that's adding blue to my greens. What if I add green to my greens, which means that I would need to use the magenta slider and go the opposite way. Oh, that's nice. And maybe we'll warm that up a bit. We could add a little bit of red to that too. And that looks really nice. Maybe we'll darken those greens up a little bit by adding a bit of black to them. And perfect. So now all I need to do is use a mask here to hide everything else. So I'm going to invert this mask and go ahead and paint in the same way I did before just on my greens. And so here's where I started and that's where I'm at. And you can see that that's a really nice change. So let's take a look at what this might look like in a kind of a real life situation and how we would use this. All right, so we have this forest image, which I like a lot and I wanted to make something dreamy out of it. And this is what I came up with and I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. Okay, so first let's make a copy. I'm just gonna drag this down to the new layer icon. And then I want to put a blur on here. So I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. And what I want is good shape, but no detail. So I'm going to do it about there. Just blur the heck out of this thing. I'm just going to hit OK. And now I'm going to change my blend mode of the blur layer. Let's just call this Blur. And I'm going to change it to overlay. And look at that. So we've got this nice moody photo now. And my blacks are really black. And I don't want them that black. So I need to lift them up a little bit. So I want to grab a mask for just the really, really super dark tones. And I'm just going to use Tony Kuiper's Rapid Mask. And click on the Composite button. And hit the darks number six, which is the very last one. And that's the darkest tones. That's exactly what I want. And I'll click on the layer button and choose a curve. And here is my curve. You can see that I've got a spike right down here. That's the only stuff that's involved in that mask. So I'm just going to move my white point over and lift those blacks up. Okay. So obviously our color is a mess. It's saturated, it's shifted, and we have to fix that. And guess what? 
That's where selective color comes in. So I'm just going to add a selective color layer. So the first thing I want to do is fix my reds. And I'm just going to pull some of the red out of here by adding a little bit of cyan, maybe. And that helps a little, but not too much. Maybe we just need to add some blue. And actually adding a little green helps quite a bit. So sometimes you need to, you know, play with these sliders. Don't be afraid to play with them. You're not going to break anything. You can always start over. And now I'm going to fix my yellows. Let's see what we've got here. Lots of yellow in here. Let's just see where our greens are residing by moving that black slider around. And let's just make this a little smaller and move it over so we can see the whole thing. All right, so let's go back to the yellows and we want to make those maybe a little bit brighter. And I think I want to add some yellow to them. And maybe let's pull a little yellow out and add a little bit of red and a little magenta. And those look pretty good. And let's go to our greens. And we're going to add some yellow and really cool those off. And just like that, that looks pretty good. So look how we fix those colors in just about 10 seconds. And I can still go back and play with this. I can decide maybe I want my yellows a little darker. And you just play around with this until you get what you want. So this tool is a fantastic editing tool. And it's so underutilized. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Until next time, be creative and have fun.